This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV and Association from MTK Global, home of the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury in Las Vegas. Uh, Happy New Year, Tyson. Happy New Year to all the viewers. Happy New Year. First interview of the year, 2020. Let's go. There we go, baby. Um, Sugar Hills. <laughs> Sugar Hills coming. Um, Andy Lee as well. You're re reunited with the Cronk Gym. What yeah. have they brought to the table, Tyson? Uh, just bringing power to the table and sitting down in my shorts looking for a knockout. It's no secret. Yeah, at a press conference in LA, all we heard from you was knockout, knockout, knockout. Yeah, I want to be 21st uh, knockout victim. People suggest that, uh, you know, you, you lack power, etc. We all hear this all the time. But as you said, you've already got 20 knockouts. Why yeah. do you think that sort of agenda is pushed? Tyson? Because I'm a slick master boxer. Yeah, so I don't need to look for power, but considering I'm not going to get a decision, then I need to knock out. What did you make of Deontay's demeanour the other day, Tyson? I thought he was all right. You know, he looks, uh, looks fit, he looks match fit, he looks ready. He, uh, he, just a boxing fight, isn't it? You know, I don't think he's afraid of a fight, neither am I. Let's go to war. Hope he meets me in the middle of the ring for a slugfest. When I was on the plane coming over here yesterday, I was reading some of your book. Uh, there was a paragraph that stuck out to me about when you flew and saw Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, you just yeah. got a random flight. Um, God rest his soul, firstly. Uh, as I said, you were reunited with the Cronk Gym. Yeah. Um, how much did he cheat, teach you, Tyson? I was only over there for three weeks in Detroit. I had some great experience, good times, and opened my eyes up to, to the world of boxing, travelling around the world and that. And I spent another three weeks with him in Austria and Canada. So six weeks in total, but it was a good impact, you know. I, I remember talking to him about balance and, and all the little things that help win world title fights. The fundamentals he taught you, balance, footwork, head movement, everything that you display in the ring, do you think that's overlooked with a lot of boxers nowadays? Um, you know, this is a sweet science. Uh, me and Peter worked a lot on uh, balance and footwork and feints and awkwardness. We worked for years on it, actually. You know, it wasn't just, I didn't just learn that in the crunk gym in three weeks. That was like from 2012 to 2015, end of 15, of practicing the same stuff day in, day out. So yeah, we, uh, we worked repetitively doing the same stuff and it, it become a natural way of boxing to me. But as we see in the last fight and as we've seen in this country many times, they like pressure here. They're not, they're, in Vegas, they do like boxing like Mayweather, but America on, on a whole, they like to see pressure and they like to see big, big shots coming. And that's what they score. Your cousin Andy Lee's uh, in camp as well. Uh, how much has he brought to the table as well, Tyson? He's a young, fresh trainer, very experienced in the game. Um, we're working again on balance and crisp, sharp punches. Um, it's all new. It's all new to me. I like a new challenge. I like fresh stuff. And I, um, I, I like the, the new ventures. It gets me up for it. Gets me up for the, um, for the challenge. That flight I mentioned when you went to Detroit, just talk me through what went through your head. You just booked the flight and got out there? Yeah, like I said in the book, I, I booked the flight, went out there, didn't know where I was going, didn't have an address, didn't have a phone number. Turned up at the old Cronk Gym, it wasn't a Cronk Gym anymore. Then I got in the taxi and said, can you take me to the new Cronk Gym? And he found out where it was, took me there, walked into the gym. Sugar Hill was in the ring, I didn't know him at the time. And I said, yes, it's Emmanuel here. He said, who are you? I said, I'm the future heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury. He got on the phone and goes, there's some crazy white dude here saying he's a future heavyweight champion of the world. Tyson Fury, Emmanuel said, bring him down. And that was it, they moved me into his house. I spent the next couple of weeks with him every day. When you walked into the gym, what was the reception? What did the other fighters like? As you said, you were the only white guy in there. Six foot nine of you as well. Yeah, they'd never seen somebody who can move like me. Uh, big, a big European, they're usually stiff and, and uh, robotical, methodical, and they've got no charisma. I was in there, uh, I was the life and soul of the gym. Probably the best mover, best dancer, best singer, best everything in that gym at that time. Everyone was buzzing, so was I. It was uh, a great, great stable of fighters in there. There were some hell of fighters, Dimitri Salita, uh, Cornelius Bundage, uh, Steve Forbes, Andy Lee, um, and many, many, many others uh, that I... Um, 20 and 0, 25 and 0 fighters, all time fighters, young fighters, all sorts of stuff. So it was a great, uh, great time to be there. You mentioned that you don't have that European stiff style, obviously, but you've also got that conditioning yeah. where you can go 12 rounds. Are you and Deontay both freaks of nature where you shouldn't be able to move like you do and your conditioning shouldn't be so good? And Deontay, obviously, we know what his secret is. He, uh, it's no secret, sorry. His power is absolutely ridiculous. Are you both freaks of nature, is that fair to say? I'd say so, yeah. We're both the only, only two lasting um, fighters from the class of 2008 who turned professional. Um, we're both still unbeaten. 11 years unbeaten as pros. Um, 11, 
it's, it's a hell of a fight, you know. Credit to Wilder for putting it on the line and credit to myself for putting it on the line. We're not just putting on beaten records. We're putting our whole livelihood, everything we've worked all our life for. None of us, not, not one man of us have tasted defeat. And, you know, it's been a long time at the top and it's been a long time. Challenges, all the challenges that come. So, you know, someone's always got to go, unless it's a draw again, which I don't think it will be. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a credit to boxing. And I think more boxers at the top of the game need to step up to the plate and fight each other all the time because why wait till you've lost two or three fights and, and five, ten years past your best? Why not fight in your, in your prime? I'm 31, I'm in the prime in my life. I'm coming off five back-to-back -back victories in, in short time. Wilder's the same, 34 in the prime, coming off of five, six, well, five, six back-to-back -back victories, match fit. So, yeah, this is a great time for the heavyweight division and a great time for the sports of boxing fans. From what you said there, I can sense a, a lot of respect for Deontay from yourself. Yeah, listen, he's unbeaten in 43 fights, as, as I am in unbeaten in 30 fights. Um, so you got to respect any man that gets a pair of gloves on, especially one that's a knockout king and unbeaten. Tyson, how long do you think you've got left in the game? I've got three more fights left. Yeah. Do you expect uh, a trilogy with Deontay? Uh, I don't know. I expect uh, Wilder next, Joshua, then Dylan White, then I'm out. Okay, why Dylan White? Because he's been mandatory for, I don't know, how many days did he say? 2,000 days. 2,000 days, and he hasn't had a world title shot. So when I beat Wilder, I'll give him a shot. You think he deserves it then, yeah? Well, he's mandatory, so, you know. Well, technically, Mauricio put that statement out where you're mandatory. I don't know how that makes sense, but technically, you're mandatory. Well, I'm mandatory. There you go. But he, he deserves a shot. He's a high-ranked contender who ain't had a shot at a world title. Seems to me everybody else has but him. So when I beat Wilder, I'll give him a shot. He can be a defence for sure. One of my last three. Joshua and White, done. There has been a lot of trash talk between you and Dylan in the previous sort of couple of years in the media. What do you make of Dylan White? I think he's a good fighter, good boxer, uh, good puncher, uh, gritty determination, can climb off the floor and win fights. I, I think he's just one of those people who's not just had the lucky breaks that everybody else has. And I think he, he'll get his shot. He's only 31, 32, same age as me. Um, Young for an heavyweight, he's coming off a bit of a layoff, six months or so, so he needs to get back in there and get back match fit again. Fair enough. Uh, you mentioned Anthony Joshua, loads of talk that he was going to come here and spar you. He's the one who put the offer out to you. Why do you think he didn't turn up, Tyson? I don't know. It's all hot air, isn't it? You know, sometimes people say stuff in the heat of an interview and they don't really mean it. And I think after he did the interview with Sky, when he said he'd come over, he, he said afterwards he didn't wish he never said it. But me being me, obviously, accepted with my bunny ears and having a massage at the same time. But I said, it doesn't really matter. I don't want him to come sparring anyway. It's not going to help me. He's nothing like Deontay Wilder at all. Mm. And I, I wouldn't want to give him the opportunity to get an insight on what it's like to be outboxed and outpunched by me in a spar rather than in a fight. He, his time will come. Don't worry about that. Well, let's talk about who has come. David Adelaide, uh, George Fox. Uh, yeah. Who are the others that have uh, been sparring you? I've got uh, David Adderley, very good kid. George Fox, Don Charles' son, very good lad. Um, who else have I got? I've got uh, Gerard Ennis, uh, the American uh, guy. He's unbelievable good as well. Um, Guido Vianello, he's unbelievable good as well. Um, I think I've got one more. I think I've got five. Have I got five? I've got Jordan, Jordan Thompson, cruise weight, but he's weighing 215 pounds at a minute. He's very good too. Good, sharp work. So, yeah, I've got the mixture of speed, um, size, brute strength, um, awkwardness, and I've got the, um, the slick American style too to shove in there as well. I know Richard Riakpo was rumoured to come here, but he picked up an injury, didn't he? Is that why he didn't come? Um, I, d I don't know. I, I never, I never employed any of these guys. The team okay. done it. Fair enough. You know, I don't know about the sparring. I just, I just turn up and do the sparring and go home. Fair Another paragraph that stuck out in your book, a bit away from boxing, more to do with mental health, was in, in today's society, everything is about wanting more, everyone wants more, a new Ferrari, then you want another car, you get an iPhone, you want the new iPhone. How much of a role do you think that plays in people suffering with mental problems? It, in the book. Uh, it all stems from all this um, pressure that society puts on an individual. They look on social media, they look on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you only see the positive parts of people's lives. You only see him in the pool or sipping a pina colada on a white sandy beach. You never see him in the shower having a shit, do you? You never see, you never see him changing shitty nappies or cleaning the kitchen or making the beds. No one publicises that because it's not interesting. And everyone needs to realise that it's, it's not always about um, all the great stuff in life because along with the sunshine, there will be a little rain sometimes. And if we had sunshine in days every day, you'd never appreciate it. And I believe we have to have a little rain to appreciate the nice days. 
and um, and that's what it is. Well, it looks like you're having more sunshine than you were before, which is obviously a great thing. But there must be still days where you're a bit down, where you have to manage yourself. Every day, every day. I'm in and out every day. One day happy, next day sad. Yeah, I can't help it. And if I knew what it was, I'd change it, but I can't. Yesterday, I was a bit down. Today, I feel OK. I'll have ups and downs for the rest of my life. It will always be like that, unless I, unless I take medication and whatever, start taking medication. You don't believe in that, do you? Well, my medication is my training. So at the minute, I train for, for my medication. That's it. That clip you put out uh, at the house in Vegas uh, in the pool gathered a lot of reaction. Uh, I guess that was to put a message out to people about what we just talked about, about the wanting in society. Yeah, again, it looked like I was having a fantastic time, living the best life, chilling out with my sunglasses on in the pool. But really, I was I mean, a gruelling training camp. My body's physically and emotionally and mentally tired. My muscles are aching, my legs are killing me, everything's hard work. I've got 120 degrees heat in the gym. Uh, everything's hard, but if you look on social media and stuff like that, it might look like I'm having a great time in Las Vegas living the dream. But it doesn't matter if I'm in Las Vegas or Siberia. I'm going to train hard, I'm going to eat well, I'm going to sleep well, and that's it. I'm not here for a party, I'm not here to play games. I'm here for a serious fight and I'm in a serious mood. Tyson, many people believe MTK now have two of the best boxers in the world. Uh, Josh Taylor's just signed. He says he's the daddy at MTK now and, and top rank in ESPN. What do you mean, two? Two of the best boxers. The two best? Who's that? You and Josh Taylor. What about Billy Joe? Of course. Two weight world champion. Course, Billy Joe, just give him a good slap <laughs> in the teeth, will you? What do you make of Josh Taylor signing with top ranking? I think it's a fantastic signing. Josh Taylor's one of my favourite fighters. I tipped him when he turned pro to be a world champion. Um, you know, you got Billy Joe, you've got Josh Taylor, you got myself, you got so many other great fighters. MTK Global has now got to be one of the leading uh, management companies in the world for, for fighters. Uh, not just boxers, MMA fighters, wrestlers, Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys, amateurs taking over. It's MTK takeover, seriously. Well, let's talk about Billy Joe. Hopefully he doesn't give me a slap in the teeth. Uh, Rumours about Canelo. Yeah. But if that does materialise, what chance do you give him in that fight? I give him good chances. He's a good slick southpaw. Um, coming to America, though, again, Vegas. Canelo is a massive star here. Canelo's took over in Vegas from Mayweather and on these independence weekends and all that he is very hard to beat because even if it goes the distance and Billy Joe's won by four or five rounds it will he not get a decision here because one is a massive star and sells like a million pay-per-views on them independence weekends and stuff special events he's the golden boy of boxing for America you know I've come to America now and took over America completely I'm the number one fighter in America and the most probably the most popular and charismatic since Muhammad Ali. But Canelo, on them special weekends, he takes over these places. So it would be very hard to, to beat him on points here. And look, I'm in the same boat with Wilder. They've got one heavyweight champion and that's equaled Muhammad Ali's defences. They haven't got anybody else, some, some young prospects. So it's going to be hard to get a decision here over them. It's like going to England and expecting to get a decision over Anthony Joshua. Or, or, you know what I mean, or over myself or anybody. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. It's like going to Germany and expecting to beat Sven Ocker or going to Wales and expecting to beat Joe Carzaghi on points. You know, it's very tough to do. It is achievable because I beat Klitschko in Germany when everyone said I'd never get a points decision, and I did. So, you know, you just got to hope that they do the right thing. And I, I, I think Billy Joe can outbox him for sure. Outbox him. He's very smart, switched on, focused, and he'll outbox Canelo. And it, then it's all up to the judges, isn't it? Yes, it is. What about the Callum Smith fight with Billy Joe? Callum Smith and Billy Joe. Callum Smith's a big guy, like light heavyweight size. Uh, he's like, I don't know how tall he is. What is he, 6'2", 6'3"? Six 6'3". Three? Six three. And Billy Joe's about 5'8", five 5'9", five is he? He's a little bit taller than that. 5'10", So it's a big difference. But listen, he's capable of beating anybody. We've seen John Ryder, who's he's a small guy, mm. give uh, Callum Smith a hell and eye water in his last fight. So I bet, I bet Billy Joe's looked at that and thought, you know what, I get round him to the side of him, up the middle, whatever. But anyone can have an off night, and I think it's a good fight for British boxing and world boxing too. But I'd have to pick Billy Joe. It's all wrong for him. Slick southpaw with good movement. Tyson, you mentioned stars in Las Vegas, yourself and Canelo. Uh, Conor McGregor, another star here yeah. in America, fights this weekend. Yeah. Uh, you a big fan of Conor? Yeah, I'm a big fan, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to the fight on Saturday. It's going to be a big event. Um, to, I don't know how many months he's had off, but he's had a long time out the ring. When was the Khabib fight? Last year sometime, was it? Yeah. So he's had then off. He's got a lot to prove to himself and to, to the fans as well. 
that he's uh, still still at this level, and I think he'll smash Cerrone anyway. To be honest, I don't, not that I know a lot about MMA, but like one's lost a lot of fights and one hasn't, so you got to go with a man who's uh, who hasn't lost that many. He keeps talking about wanting to come back to boxing. Obviously, we saw him against Floyd Mayweather, didn't go too well. Uh, do you think he should return to boxing? Would you like to see him back? I'd like to see him back because it's a great money spinner. It brings everyone to Las Vegas. It makes money for the Las Vegas hotels, casinos, bars and restaurants. It gives people tons of jobs, makes Manny Pacquiao a load of money to, <laughs> to feed his people in his country. And they both make plenty of money out of it. And, um, and it creates opportunities for many people around the world. So it's, uh, it's a good fight, yeah. Talking about crossing over, of course, no secret, there's been rumours about you going to UFC and Connor said he'd train you. You welcome to that one day? You know what, going into a UFC fight for me is, is not what I, I'm about. I'm not a, an MMA fighter, I don't grab and wrestle on the floor, I'm a stand-up fighting man. So yeah, the thing that I want to do is I'll fight a UFC fighter, but with small gloves on, with boxing rules rather than, rather than um, grabbing and pulling to the floor and all that. Um, or maybe in a cage with a little gloves on, but boxing rules, no kicking and uh, elbowing and all that. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be, it would be interesting to see to see if uh, an MMA fighter, an heavyweight, can can do the same damage to a boxer with them little gloves on as they can to the MMA fights because they seem to get smashed to bits, don't they? And it's uh, very intriguing for me because obviously coming from a, a traveler background and bare knuckle fights and all that, I, I, I'm not afraid to get punched in the face with no gloves on. And to, to beat me, you'd have to fucking kill me. Um, yeah, because I'd never give up. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it's one of them fights. Any UFC fighter in particular? Any of them. Um, whoever the champion is at the time. I know that they're supposed to be fighting again, Cormier and Stipe. So whoever, whoever's the champion at that time, doesn't matter. There were some quotes about you wanting to train Andy Ruiz. You said you'd help him out. Yeah, I'd help him out. I'd like to see him come, I'd like to see him come back to, uh, to boxing and get back fit again and put some good work in the gym. And um, yeah, I'd, li I'd, li I'd like to help him out because I think he's a really good little fighter, but we didn't see the best of him in his last fight. Um, we saw a guy come in at over 20 stone, a six foot two little fighter. He, he should be around about 18, 18, 10. And then I think you'd see the best of Andy Ruiz. And I think him and uh, Dylan White is a very interesting fight. And I hope that fight gets made because it's a really good one. And they can both make a few quid out of it. And it's a good fight for the, for the boxing fans. But it's if Andy Ruiz trains, isn't it? He, he's made a lot of money out of his last two fights. And he probably doesn't need to work ever again in his life. But at the end of the day, he's 30 year old and he's got a long life left ahead of him. And there's going to be a lot of left and right turns in it. And you, you never know when you need a few quid for a rainy day. Who do you fancy in that fight with Dylan and Andy? Um, it depends, like I say, it depends what Andy Ruiz turns up. I know Dylan White trains hard for every fight. And we, we've seen that Andy Ruiz doesn't. So yeah, if, if they both turn up uh, on A games, I think it'd be a really interesting fight, 50-50 fight. Mm -hmm. But if, if Ruiz don't train, he comes in at 21 stone, 22 stone, then obviously I fancy Dylan White for sure. Tyson Coogan's out uh, in Dubai with Ben at the moment. Uh, he did an interview and he said that you're still good friends. He hasn't really contacted you because he just wants you to crack no. on with your camp. Can you just make a, a comment on the split itself and how the relationship is with Ben? Yeah, there's not really much to say, to be fair. Ben's training over in Dubai with Billy Joe and whoever else, yes. and I'm over here in America. Um, and that's it, we haven't fell out. It was a conversation we had. I wanted to bring uh, somebody else in, and that was it. And Ben's got other commitments, so he can't just fly around the world, and that's it. There is no more to say. Like, people want to know the inside story, yeah. uh, who slept with whose missus, and, you know, all this sort of shit. There is nothing to say, really. There is nothing to say. Uh, that's it, we're just not training together anymore for now and that's it really well I think that says a lot because when this happen, happens normally it's over a, a fallout and well, we have not really because I've just seen that foul has left Dave Cordell Dave Cordell that was a good relationship as well yeah there's no there's no, uh, no hard feelings I've never really fell out with any of my uh, trainers that I've um, been with I've had I've had many trainers I've had Steve Egan I've had my uncle Yui I've had my uncle Peter I've had Robert McCracken I've had Pat Barrett I've had Brian Hughes I've had um, uh, uh, who else have I had? I've had Emmanuel Stewart, I've had Chris Johnson, I've had Andy Lee, I've had Sugar Hill, I've had Ben Davison, um, and my dad. I've had many trainers in my life, and, and to be honest with you, I've not fell out with any of them. You seen Joseph Parker lately? I seen Joseph in the in the gym the other day, a couple of uh, couple of days ago. He come and watch me spar. Um, yeah, he's a good guy. I like Joe, um, and I hear he's got some big fights coming up. So yeah. good luck to him in 2020.
Yeah, Eddie said he wants to make that fight with Usyk. Uh, give him a good chance against Alexander Usyk. I give, I give him a good chance against anybody. As long as he dedicates himself and he trains hard, then he's obviously been a world heavyweight champion before and never been knocked out or anything. He only had a couple of losses to two decent men, two good men. So, yeah, there's, there's no shame in that. And I'm sure if he does his thing, he'll give anybody a good fight. And I give him a good chance at beating anybody. It's heavyweight who can punch and box. I know you're really good friends. Would you fight him if the money was right, if there was titles on the line, etc. from his side? Um, I wouldn't know. I've no interest in fighting Joe at all. What am I going to get out of it? It's like... Well, say he regained a world title, that vacant title. It won't, it won't mean anything to me because them world titles, I already own them all. They're already mine in the cupboard at home. So a belt don't really mean anything. I know I've said this many times and I keep cracking on about it, but I've only got three fights left and Josie Parker ain't one of them. That's it. Usyk ain't one of them either? No. Usyk, I, you can... Usyk ain't on the list, he's a no-name, no-one's interested and it doesn't make any money. So what would I want to fight him for? It's, it's a small cruiserweight, a foreigner, don't speak good English and nobody's really interested anyway, he's not setting anything alight. I want the big fights that people are interested in and that ain't one of them. What if he was to beat Joshua? Still, it wouldn't be a big fight, he's still, he's still a foreigner in a, in a westernised world. The belts are back in the west um, and they're going to stay there. And, you know, so whatever it sounds like, the heavyweight champion should be from Britain or America, nowhere else. That's it. Because maybe in Ukraine he might be a big star, but the, the Britain or America ain't interested in, in some Ukrainian boxers boxing in Ukraine, and that's the way it is. The heavyweight champion of the world needs to be in the West, and that's it. That's how it goes. Tyson, I know you're a big fan of Tiafima Lopez. We've seen him win a world title yeah. recently. Great knockout of Richard Comey. Uh, that Richard Lomachenko. Comey, let me tell you, Richard Comey is a very good fucking very fighter, good. and I'm a big fan of him as well. And little Tiafimo just walked right through him. He is the biggest little tiny man I've ever seen in my life. He's a heavyweight on midget's legs. <laughs> he's got two legs like that, and he's got my size body. He's the biggest little man I've ever seen. He's the biggest featherweight on the planet, bar nobody. And I got to back him what he says. Ain't no 126, 135 pounder can beat him. No Lomachenko's nobody. Because he's a heavyweight on two tiny legs. With speed and power. Like, probably it's harder than me as a featherweight. You seem very high on him. I seem very high on him. I've got good reasons. He's, he's a good little fighter. He believes in himself. He's got knockout power. He'll fight any... He's been, he's been calling for the Lomachenko fight for the past four or five fights. And he's only had a few fights. He's 21 year old. And he, he's had hundreds of amateur fights. And uh, he knows what he's doing. He's got his dad behind him. And I like his dad. Dad very confident. And I know his dad tries to get him to talk a bit more. And maybe he should listen. Because no one gets anywhere for it being Mr. Quiet. And now he's starting calling out Lomachenko properly and putting it on people. It's an exciting division. Yeah. Let's talk about another little man, Isaac Lowe. How's he getting on? He's doing really well. He's training with Jorge Capitello, a good friend of ours. Um, he's doing really well. He's working on his technique. He's working on his stuff. Very, he's, he's very, very, very pushing hard. And, you know, his weight's really, really good for this fight. He's not struggling with the weight, thanks to George, um, George Lockhart, yeah. the nutritionist. And everything's going really well. Uh, Isaac's training hard, and we're all training good. Isaac's doing really well. And he's having another defence of his WBC international featherweight title. Keeps moving up the rankings, keep active, and he keep, keeps going. And I'm not too short in the distant future where Isaac Lowe will be fighting for a world title, whether it's um, WBC or whatever belt it would be, he'll be fighting for it. Not, not too, not too uh, short in the future as well. Seems a very good team spirit. I know Christian's been here since uh, before the Klitschko days. Yep. Uh, your brothers are all here. Uh, do you want to just give everyone a shout out? Big shout out to all the team. You're all a pack of suckers. <laughs> nah, listen, every, everyone's doing their own job. Everyone's here, everyone's knuckling in, and every, the camp's going really well, no complaints. I've got my family here for company, I've got Isaac, I've got cousins here, I've got relatives. I've got everybody here. I've got people who I've been with from the beginning, not from the beginning, but like from the beginning of my championship reign. Mm. You know, so it's good. Everyone's doing what they should be. Mm. And I uh, can't complain, no complaints, no injuries and no problems. OK, well, Tyson, appreciate your time here in Las Vegas. Actually, before I go, Dennis McCann, I see you comment on his post the other day. Yeah, he's another good little fighter. Frank's got a good fighter there, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a good little fighter, a little southpaw, um, who can really punch, and he, he looks good. He's definitely a star of the future. Well, you seem in a good place here. So, uh, as I said, thank you for your time. Uh, big shout-out to Marbella, Wow Hydrate. Who have we got? MTK. MTK. Top rank. Top rank. Fox, ESPN. Lund Group, Impact Insurance, Everlast, Path in Sports, um, Applied Nutrition. What else? Bobby Parker's here. Who? Bobby Parker. Bobby Parker. Who else? 
everybody who's been getting box fit, got gold star promotions, you know, the list continues. And it, it seems to me that when I was fighting Klitschko for the World Heavyweight Championship and I was mandatory by two organisations I was unbeaten in years, I couldn't get a free track seat of nobody. Really? I had to see them track suits that he's got in there, I paid £1,800 for them, for the team. I couldn't get a free pair of socks. And now I'm being blessed with loads of stuff and loads of sponsorship. So yeah, big shout out to everyone who supported me in my uh, in my um, career. Big shout out to my wife Paris. Just just so everyone knows, I'm married. You know, just in case you don't know, I've got a wife called Paris. Yeah, um, we've been together for a long time. Just because she always says I never mentions her in these interviews. Uh, I think you do. And just so people know that I've got a wife. You know, just if you don't know already, I have got a wife. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Tyson, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I will see you in four weeks uh, back here in Las Vegas. No problem. Peace out. Gold Star Promotions is proud to present Floyd Money Mayweather. The man himself is coming to the UK for his UK tour, February and March 2020. For all info and tickets, Gold Star Promotions, the host of the UK.